Hello, this is Sarah Zuber, and I am a mental health therapist in Portland, Oregon. I'm back to share some more tools and strategies for managing mood and anxiety in these uncertain times. And this is the last letter of the SPEAK model acronym today, which stands for kindness. I'll put up the slide real quick and go through what each of them stand for again, and then we will talk about kindness. Okay, here we go. So speak, this is a mood management tool that if you check in, if you attend to each of these items, then we tend to do better. This is sort of a baseline mood management tool. Um, so S stands for structure, meaning daily structure and routine, um, sleep hygiene, going to bed at the same time every day, waking up at the same time, eating meals regularly throughout the day, having things to do. P, plan pleasant activities. Um, so planning things to look forward to, large and small, short and long term. E, exercise, moving your body in some way. A, assertiveness, speaking up for what you want and need, saying no when you need to say no. And then finally, K, kindness, and that's toward yourself and toward others. Kindness to me has felt really relevant and complicated just in the last few days. It has really struck me, perhaps knowing that this last one was coming. And also, it just, there's so many new ways to fail right now or feel like we're failing that the inner critic can be really loud toward us and also judgment toward each other. Um, here in Oregon, we have the stay at home order. I think that might be nationwide now. But um, so there's lots of easy ways to judge who's following correctly, who's not, you know, and there's some, there's a lot of kindness happening out there toward each other, feeling like we're in this together and we're being kind and gentle to each other. But then there's also, you know, I'm hearing about people getting yelled at for <laughs> coming within six feet and, um, you know, interpretations of what that means, of what these guidelines are and how they're not being interpreted. Here's one I heard the other day. Oh, this person is avoiding, these people are going around me, staying really six feet away from me, like I'm, I'm contagious and, you know, maybe I need to come with this comeback. But really, you know, that's mind reading. That's reading their intention of like they're grossed out by me or think I appear contagious for some reason when really perhaps this is a demonstration of respect for the other people's boundaries and really has nothing to do with how you look or appear to them, but more a sign of respect or, or perhaps they have some underlying conditions that make them especially on edge about not wanting to get exposure. So anyway, there's lots of opportunities for us to be kind to ourselves and others and lots of opportunities for us to, to be unkind. Um, when we are not kind, that leaves us with a bad feeling in ourselves. That's a bad energy for us when we are nasty to others. It's exhausting. It's unnecessarily exhausting. It's a much better feeling to show kindness and to, you know, if you are feeling the urge to say something out of anger, to bite your tongue and ride that out until you are feeling less emotionally reactive. Because when we react out of emotion sometimes, especially with anger, we can set ourselves up for regretting it late, later. All emotions are fleeting. They come and they go. If we act on them in an emotional state where we're not balanced, our thinking and our feeling selves are not balanced, we may decide later when we are feeling more balanced that that's not the path that we would have chosen in a balanced place. So there are a few things in life that we need to make a decision and have a reaction to right this second. So um, you always have time. You always have time. It's better to ride that out and wait. Um, <clears throat> I want to also share with you a loving kindness meditation and I wish I knew the source <laughs> I have a book at my office that I'm not in my office and I'm sorry that I don't know the source but um, so this is a, a very simple meditation to sort of cultivate that feeling of kindness toward yourself and toward others and we start with ourselves and we put our attention on ourselves and we repeat to ourselves may I be peaceful may I be happy May I be safe. 
Now I want you to think about someone that you care about, someone you're close to, and send this to them now. May you, may this person be peaceful. May they be happy. May they be safe. And send that energy to a person you care about. And now I want you to think of someone that you feel sort of neutral about, not particularly important to you, but not someone that you have bad feelings towards, just somebody neutral, I'll give you a second. And now I want you to think to yourself, may this person be peaceful. May they be happy. May they be safe. Now take a moment and think about somebody that you are on bad terms with right now, or had an argument with recently, or someone that you just don't care for. Put your attention on this person and send them the same. May they be peaceful. May they be happy. May they be safe. And lastly, universally, everyone, send your energy out to the world, to everyone around you, to everyone in the world. May they be peaceful. May they be happy. May they be safe. I want you to notice how each of those, as you were thinking of each person, how did it feel? What came up for you? How are you feeling now? Was it hard to feel like you're sending peaceful and happy and safe feelings towards somebody that you don't like? Or was it easy? Were you, did that feel good to hold someone with kindness that you don't particularly like or don't respect? I would also like to share one more resource with you. And um, if you'd like to explore this, this concept of kindness or self-compassion is another way to think of this. This person actually, Dr. Kristen Neff is um, someone who specializes, a researcher and um, someone who specializes in this area who argues that it's better to think about this in terms of compassion for yourself versus um, actually versus like self-esteem. She, um, I noticed as I went to her website, which is self compassion dot org is her website. Kristen Neff is her name. Um, she has a she has a lot of resources on here, but she's offering a self compassion in the midst of COVID nineteen um, uh, online couple hour thing on April fifteenth at eleven Pacific time, which has already been booked. But she may offer more in the future. So that if you, this is something that you're interested in putting your attention on, that's, that would be a great resource. Also on her website, um, she has some some self-compassion practices and guided meditations and exercises. So that's a great, she has some great books too. So, um, and some talks on YouTube that you can look more into. She's very well respected. That's a good resource. So focus, just pay, pay attention to where your inner critic is chiming in and learn of letting go and know that you're dealing with a lot right now and we can't be all things, um, especially as parents, we can't be full-time employees and teachers and parents all managing this all at the same time we just you cannot do give 100 percent of, of any of those roles at all times so um practice some self-kindness with that and some letting go and some space room to adjust and to not be perfect and to focus on what's most important and let the rest go and, and know that we're exhausted every day we're exhausted we all are you're not alone um it's like it's like, you know, your computer getting drained because it's, even if you're not doing anything on it, it's because there's applications running in the background that are, that we just have a hum right now of all these little, all these little decisions and things that we're thinking about with every move that we make that we didn't make, that we didn't think about before. Anytime we leave the house, we have to think about how close we are to people and should we, you know, wearing masks and what did we touch and do we touch our face and do I need to wipe this down? There's all these considerations, all these applications running in the background that are just, are just taking all of our energy and our patience and all of our coping skills to just deal and 
you know, give yourself some grace and, and, and allow yourself to not be perfect and same with others. And don't let one incident paint the character of someone else or yourself. Let them be discrete incidences, not paint brush strokes of your character. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.